Hello students. Now we will study chapter 15 that is our environment page 256 from today. And please don't forget to keep your NCRT science book while you are watching this video. It will make you understand easily. Have you heard the word environment being used frequently by the people? Yes, of course. No? And we also hear this term being used in newspapers, TV and radio too. Now, what is this environment? Environment is simple yet very complicated term and we can define it like this. The immediate surroundings or conditions where non-living and living organisms interact and live together is called environment. In other way, we can define it like this. Everything that surrounds us is called environment. A very sad truth. We, the humans, are very much responsible for destroying our environment. What happens when we add waste to our environment? We generate a lot of waste materials that are thrown away. And have you wondered, these wastes are of different types. Can you give me some examples of waste that come out of your kitchen? Okay, you, you can uh, think the examples. By now, you are able to see the differences in waste. Yes, they are of two types. Number one, it is biodegradable. And number two, it is non-biodegradable. Now, what do we mean by biodegradable uh, waste or substances? Substances which can be decomposed by the action of microorganisms are called biodegradable substances. Examples are fruits, vegetable peels, cotton, jute, dung, paper. And by the way, that is not steel jute okay these substances they can decay easily they can be decomposed next it is non-biodegradable substances substances which cannot be decomposed by the action of microorganisms are called non-biodegradable waste example plastic polythene metals synthetic fibers radioactive waste, pesticides, etc. These, they will not be decomposed by the microorganisms. We can uh, find plastics or polythenes or metals uh, inside the earth as it is even after many years. Hence, they cannot be decomposed by microorganisms. Examples of these biodegradable uh, substances and non-biodegradable substances, you can add more over here. You know, when microorganism decomposes these materials, they release enzymes, particular enzymes to release, sorry, to uh, decompose these materials. But these enzymes are also very much specific in their action that is why they can decompose only some substances and the rest they cannot be decomposed by these microorganisms uh, next it is ecosystem it is in your book also it is over here it ecosystem now ecosystem it is the structural and functional unit of biosphere comprising of all the interacting organisms in an 
area together with the non living constituent of the environment okay there is another definition also it is ecosystem is the functional unit of environment comprising of living and non living components as a whole we know that in this earth there are living and non living things excuse me and they both are interdependent that means they both depend on each other uh, in this earth hence these two living and non living components form the ecosystem ecosystem it is of two types or we can find two types of ecosystem in this earth one is natural ecosystem another one is artificial ecosystem natural ecosystem are those ecosystem which exist in nature by its own there is no interception of humans examples are forest lake oceans etc and artificial ecosystems are man made ecosystems that are made by humans and examples are garden crop field aquarium now uh, we can uh, see the example of garden now when we uh, uh, think of a garden we think of a uh, different flowers small trees bushes uh, small shrubs weeds different kinds of flowers no uh, over there and not only that we can see there are small insects uh spiders and all it's an every insects which we can find in garden and also the soil water and all these together make up an ecosystem and don't forget garden it is made by human hence it is a sorry it is an artificial ecosystem and our ecosystem it comprises of or it is made up of biotic and abiotic factors biotic means living things that is plants and animals and abiotic means non living things that is soil water and all and the biotic component of our ecosystem consists of producers they are the green plants consumers and the decomposers and these consumers they are of different types they are the herbivores carnivores omnivores and parasites you can uh, memorize it in this way the biotic component of a ecosystem that is living things uh, it consists of three kinds of uh, three kinds of organisms number one that is producers producers are the green plants green plants are called producers since they make their food by themselves and consumers that means they will consume the food they will take in the food and lastly the decomposers decomposers uh, they help in decaying the matter now consumers these consumers these consumers found in this earth are of different types four types herbivores carnivores omnivores and parasites and uh, producers they are the green plants which prepare their food by themselves and hence are called autotrophs consumers are those which directly or indirectly depend on other organism for their food that is they all are heterotrophic next decomposers decomposers are the microorganisms which break down the complex organic substances into simple inorganic substances that go into the soil and are used up once again by plants that is they turn into manure and all and uh they break down the dead remains or waste product of 
organisms also decomposers it is the role of decomposers or function of decomposers uh, and this you can take the example of jungles in jungle la, uh, there are large amount of leaves falling down you no know, twigs and all uh, and some animals insects and all they die over there but no one goes to clear that jungle or clean up the jungle at that time these decomposers they play a very vital role they decompose all these products plants product plant products and animal products into manure and these are used by those uh, trees and plants in jungles again now types of consumers herbivore herbivore these all are the basic things which you already know herbivores they eat only they feed on plants uh, grass eater or grass eating carnivore they are called flesh eating because they uh, feed on or they eat flesh and next is omnivore omnivore means they eat both plants and um, flesh and the parasites lastly it is parasites parasites are those organisms that live on that is outside or inside the body of another organism these parasites they obtain its, its nutrients from the host that is on which they live and um, uh, of human being parasites found in human they are lice you know no lice which we found in our uh, hair and inside we can find worms uh, these all are the parasites endoparasites and ectoparasites next important term it is food chains now first look at the examples you can see that it is shown by an arrow sometimes questions uh, also come in examination to uh, arrange these things in a way of food chain now first see the example uh, it is grass grass is eaten by grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by frog frog is eaten by snake and snake is eaten by eagle now it is forming a chain that is uh, food chain food of eagle it is snake snake uh, frog sorry frog is the food of snake grasshopper is the food of frog grass is the food of grasshopper hence this food it is forming a chain and it is a food chain example of food chain perfect example of food chain and uh, now we can define food chain like this it is a sequence of organisms sequence means see then you can see really sequence of organisms through which energy is transferred in the form of food by the process of one organism consuming uh, the other one organism consuming the other one organism consuming the other now this is forming a food chain and each food chain forms a tropic label tropic t r o p h i c tropic label these form a tropic label now what is tropic label or tropic labels they are the various steps or labels in the food chain where transfer of food or energy takes place now this forms tropic label no? one label two three four five these are the different labels and this is the figure showing the tropic labels this also sometimes uh, comes in examination to draw the tropic labels it is in your book uh, in figure 15.2 and in figure 15.1 you can see the different food chain no here grasses these are eaten by deer and deer is eaten by tiger grass eaten by insect grasshopper frog snake and eagle grass eaten by scorpio fish and fish is eaten by crane these are the examples of food chain and now these food chains form different tropic labels 
now producer producer it forms the first tropic label this one it is the first tropic label and next herbivores or primary consumers herbivores that means producer is green plants are eaten by herbivores no they form primary consumers they form second tropic label and next carnivores carnivores or secondary consumers they form the third tropic level and large carnivores or tertiary consumers they form the fourth fourth tropic level so producers green plants they are the first tropic level primary consumers that is herbivores they form the second tropic label secondary consumers or the little carnivores no they form the third tropic level and lastly uh, large carnivores like tiger and all they are the tertiary consumers they form the fourth tropic label these are the uh, these are the different tropic labels you know when one form of energy is changed to another some energy is lost to the environment in forms which cannot be used again the flow of energy between various components of environment has been extensively studied and it has been found that now we will see this uh, flow of energy between the these different tropic labels uh the flow of energy it is unidirectional that means it goes only to one direction unidirectional means it will not come back energies captured by these producers or these autotrophs it is transferred to primary consumers then to secondary consumers then to tertiary consumers uh and when these energies are transferred from one tropic level to another tropic level uh, the energy which went to different tropic levels it will not come back okay it will not come back again you remember this hence the flow of energy in these tropic level it is unidirectional that is it will flow only in one direction and uh the sunlight is captured by these green plants we know that and these green plants capture only 1% 1% of sunlight these green plants capture only 1% of sunlight and convert it into uh, food energy solar energy is converted into food energy by these producers and uh now when consumed by the next food is prepared by the producers when it is consumed by the next tropic level that is primary consumers only 10% of energy is transferred now from primary consumers to secondary consumers also only 10% of energy is transferred and from here to fourth tropic level only 10% of energy is transferred that is in the form of food no don't forget that energy is transferred it transferred in the form of food now what happens to the rest of the 90% in each tropic label the question is here now the remaining 90% is used by these organisms for maintaining their life processes in each tropic label now listen again 1% of energy 1% doesn't mean it is 1 it can be joule no example now uh, its 10% is transferred to another label again its transfer uh, 10% is an, uh, transferred to another label tropic label in this way 
so 10 percent of energy is used as uh, food no kept as energy by the producers 90 percent is used by the producers for its life process then that 10 percent energy is transferred to primary consumers rest again from that 10 percent it becomes 100 percent no in it then that 90 percent is used by this consumer then again 10 percent is transferred to secondary consumers in the form of food similarly same goes in that way so you know that while um, energy is transferred from the first tropic level to the uh, last tropic level no one that and one two three fourth and like that the energy gradually decreases it gradually decreases so to maintain or balance all this in the ecosystem a food chain simply consists of three or four tropic levels or uh, simply three four five tropic levels this much now sometimes question may come why there is only three or four or five tropic labels in a food chain then you can uh, use this as an answer that due to gradual decrease in the energy food chain contains only three to four tropic uh, and hence it is also called 10 percent law where only 10 percent of energy is available to the next tropic label another important term it is the food wave food wave you can see here in figure 15.3 where there are different uh, food chains cross connected with each other hence wave do you know web wave it's like that of the spider it's like a net hence food wave is defined like this it is a network of various food chains which are interconnected at various tropic labels you can see here grass it is eaten by insect same grass it is eaten by rat no then that rat is eaten by another um, animal and again that same rat is eaten by another animal and it is also eaten by another animal that means one tropic label may be eaten by different another tropic label grass is eaten by peacock and all hence it forms a wave this is the uh, diagram of a food wave since an organism can occupy position in more than one food chain in the food wave it occupies more than one tropic label you will also get to know this see they are they occupy different position no? in more than one food chain first it is second now see uh, grass and the this animal peacock first tropic label second tropic label but if we go from here first second third and fourth fourth tropic level that means one organism can occupy more than one position in a food chain and now from here it becomes first tropic level second tropic level but from here it becomes the fourth tropic level hence these different food chains are interconnected forming a network hence it is called food wave here uh, in figure 15.4 is a flow chart showing you uh, the flow of energy in an ecosystem see sunlight it is taken by producers then producers are fed upon by uh, herbivores herbivores are eaten by carnivores carnivores are eaten by top carnivores and in all these tropic labels these producers they are large in number we can find the greatest number of producers in this uh, earth 
and this uh, these food chains they uh, they vary you can see it from here they vary in uh, length don't forget this and instead here is no uh, straight food chain no instead of straight food chain here it is the different web of network of food chains don't forget this one also next term it is biological magnification now what do we mean by that let's see the concentration of harmful chemicals increases with every next tropic label in a food chain is called biological magnification now you know that uh, what do you mean by this from where the chemicals come let's see here suppose uh, this is a crop plant suppose this is a crop plant and it is taken by uh, another no another insect suppose this one or this one okay this one it will be easier this is the crop plant and we all know that sometimes uh, we put uh, fertilizers and all chemicals and all in the crops and we know that these fertilizers pesticides insecticides these all chemicals they are non biodegradable that means they cannot be degraded hence when it is fed upon by another organism that fertilizer or that chemicals will pass into another tropic level from here to the next tropic level suppose if this fish is eaten by human since human it um, they are the top carnivore or they occupy the topmost position in a tropic level so now that chemical will be transferred from one tropic level to another to another and lastly to the human as humans they occupy the top level of food chain the chemicals get accumulated in maximum concentration in them and this accumulation of chemicals with increase in every tropic level in a food chain this is called biological magnification now how do our activities affect the environment as we uh, as i already told in uh, starting of this chapter we human beings we play a very very vital role in uh, destroying the environment now how it is destroyed let's learn in detail or in little one is uh, we have we help or not help what can we say we are responsible for depletion of ozone layer and next is the production of huge amount of garbage see these are the uh, things environmental problems these are the environmental problems laid by our activity humans activity ozone layer depleted ozone layer depletes and large amount of waste are produced in this earth now let's learn about ozone layer and it's important and how it is getting depleted ozone <coughs> ozone it is an isotope of oxygen or it is a molecule formed by three atoms of oxygen don't forget o2 and o3 they are the isotopes of oxygen molecule and its function is to shield the surface of the earth from the harmful ultraviolet uv rays coming from the sun we know that very harmful rays that is ultraviolet rays it comes to the earth but it cannot enter to the earth why due to the layer of this ozone present in our atmosphere now if ozone layer ozone layer gets depleted and sun rays comes inside the earth we can cause sorry we can be caused by skin cancer and skin diseases in human beings now see how these ozone layer are formed 
there is oxygen molecule present in the atmosphere when the ray of sunlight pass through pass to these oxygen molecules they split into two atoms of oxygen they split into oxygen molecules these oxygen molecules they combine with another oxygen o2 present in the atmosphere forming o3 that is ozone now the layer of the earth's atmosphere consists of highly concentration of ozone forming ozone layer this layer protects the earth from ultraviolet rays coming from the sun so uh, you know ozone layer is very important for us now please memorize this one also this reaction no? uh, two atoms of oxygen diatomic oxygen it is splitted by the ultraviolet rays coming from the sun single this molecule or oxygen molecules they combine with another diatomic oxygen forming the uh, ozone so uh, the importance of this layer is it is a protective layer that protect us from that seals us from the ultraviolet rays coming from the sun and next what is the reason for the depletion of ozone layer it is uh, the release of chlorofluorocarbons cfcs which comes out of the refrigerator uh, and fire extinguisher and all and next is the pollutant that is nitrogen monoxide no which comes out from factories and all these all are responsible for depletion of ozone layer and these all uh, are the result of human activities now next is the production of garbage no we produce large number of garbage but how can we uh, manage it how can um, this garbage be managed it is because uh, you know improvement in lifestyle of our human beings have resulted in accumulation of large amount of waste materials in this earth and you know if we keep all the waste product uh, produced uh, from the people living in the earth it can form a huge uh, mountain like mount everest i think more than two or three mount everest i think i guess it no uh, don't take it seriously and you have already learned that garbage they contain two types of material biodegradable which can be decomposed and non biodegradable which cannot be decomposed now it is a huge problem but here are some methods of waste disposal first one it is biogas plant here biodegradable biogas and manure i think you all have heard about gober gas also uh, in a huge tank the gober is uh, kept for decomposition and when the decomposition takes place since decomposition it is an exothermic reaction it releases heat plus gas and that gas can be used in our chula stove and the manure so some of the biodegradable waste can be uh, put in biogas plant to produce biogas and manure next is sewage treatment plant this plant doesn't mean that plant no trees and all these are the factories big factories this sewage treatment plant plant here the drain water which contains sewage can be cleaned and uh, it can be cleaned and then put into the rivers next is the land fillings i hope you all have seen uh, landfill on the way to gantok you can see there there in such landfills the wastes are buried in a low lying areas and are compacted by rolling with bulldozers and all that means firstly in that low lying area wastes are dumped 
and then it is again buried by uh, mud no soil and run bulldozer making it uh, compact by compressing it then again it is filled with waste and again it is compressed like that way uh, in landfills such situation occurs next is composting you have learned in nine about composting no here organic waste can be filled in a compost pit and covered with a layer of soil and about after three months garbage can be sorry garbage changes to manure which can be collected and put into vegetables plants etc and i think you all have heard about uh, three hours or four hours something like that here we learn about recycling and reusing recycling means non-biodegradable waste which are non-decomposable can be recycled to make new things of course we don't have uh, things to uh, recycle it here but we can send it to the garbage collector and from there different garbages are different items are separated and sent to the factories uh, you know uh, the jar parmatma jar it is covered with plastic that plastic it is used to um, make a recycle that is recycled to make rope colored ropes that comes where we hang our clothes and that all and next is reuse reuse it is a very old technique conventional technique we know that um, uh, these all bottles of uh, soft drinks and all we can use to carry water you now making it a water bottle uh, and the battas of mithai sweets it can be used to keep uh, something dal and all at our home Th that is reusing and there are three more can you guess it if yes please read it it will be helpful for you hence don't forget the various components of ecosystems living and non-living things they are interdependent that is they depend on each other and uh next is next point it is the producers green plants make the energy from sunlight available to the rest of the ecosystem that is uh, green plants capture solar energy and transform into food energy which is not available to rest of the uh, organisms in ecosystem and um, next point it is there is a loss of energy as we go from one tropic level to next tropic level hence there is a limited number of tropic levels in a food chain next it is we the humans have a very bad impact on the environment we have literally destroyed it by using uh, chemicals like cfcs and um, these all producing nitrogen monoxide which uh, destroy or deplete the ozone layer which protect us against the ultraviolet radiation or rays coming from the sun and while the ultraviolet rays reaches this earth it can damage our environment and the waste we generate they are decomposable that is biodegradable or non-decomposable hence there are certain ways by which waste can be waste generated can be disposed so guys uh, please try to save the environment and uh, hope you have or you all have understood this chapter thank you